Good morning. It's Veda Pals team here with you today, and today we have a next lecture uh, about the basics of physiology. And today here with us is our beautiful lecture, Yelena Archibasova. She's a practitioner, PhD, and assistant professor of hormonal physiology in Novosibirsk State Medical University, and also she's a specialist of Veda Pals technical support team. So stay with Elena and uh, have a good lecture today. Hello, dear colleagues. Today we continue a course of our lectures about the uh, physiology of uh, cardiovascular system. Today we are going to get acquainted with basics of heart rate variability phenomenon. Also, we are going. Uh, to look at the spectral analysis and in the end we are going to look at the dosha's balance and how it can be uh, defined using a Veda Pulse device. But in the very beginning let me remind you something that we have already discussed earlier. We know that the heart uh, retracts, compresses uh, at a particular pace. It has its own mode of functioning and it's like a heart rate which defines by the structure of the heart, which defines by the special cells that are located in the heart. These cells are located in the conductive system of the heart and they define the heart rate exactly. And these cells are responsible for such a feature of a heart like a uh, heart automatism. Heart automatism is the ability of the heart to run high and to be self-excited without any influence from outer or inner environment. So the heart becomes excited without uh, impulses of central nervous system or any outer um, factors. And you remember we have discussed such an experiment then there was a frog and uh, we took uh, a heart of this frog and put it uh, near this frog and its heart uh, was still uh, beating like uh, compressing so we could see a heart contraction though the heart was uh, not in the body uh, but near the body of the frog. This is exactly the heart automatism that we are going to discuss. But to be exact we should say that our today's task is to explore the heart automatism in a whole system then it's uh, in the body and in a whole entire organism. Our heart, like uh, any other organ in the body, are controlled by uh, a particular uh, regulatory mechanisms. To that belongs, first of all, a vegetative nervous system. We are going to talk about it today. Also, we should say about uh, hu humoral influence and reflex influence. All these uh, regulatory mechanisms they help heart to cope with uh, different effects of environment, with everything that is happening to the heart and uh, these mechanisms help the heart to to be successful in adaptation to everything that's happening to the heart. You can see this information on the slide now. Let's start with the influence of vegetative nervous system. It is exactly the vegetative nervous system uh, that has the strongest effect on the heart rate. In a norm, it uh, models the heart rate most of all. You can see here on the screen uh, there are a lot of nerves um, located near the heart and connected to the heart and all of them 
has their influence on the heart walking. All these nerves belong to the vegetative nervous system exactly and uh, sometimes we call it the first level of nervous regulation. So, vegetative nervous system has two different divisions. The first is uh, sympathetic one and the second is parasympathetic one. But before we start to explore it, uh, I'd like to say a few words about vegetative nervous system. Vegetative nervous system controls and regulates our inner organs. Its work uh, doesn't depend on our willpower or our mm, consciousness, but uh, as you can see it from the picture, it is connected practically to all organs in our body. So this vegetative nervous system has two divisions, as I already said parasympathetic and sympathetic. Let's say in detail about each of them. If we are talking about the sympathetic division, we should say that it's the division that stimulates the activity of the heart. It has uh, mobilizing, activating effect on the heart. In medical terms we call it a positive effect. But anyway, Positive here doesn't mean uh, very good. Positive means uh, that everything becomes stronger, faster, um, all processes um, become more active. And parasympathetic division has um, an inhibitory effect on the heart. Uh, we say in medical terms negative effect, but again it doesn't mean that it's bad influence. It means that parasympathetic division has uh, such an influence then the heart beats slower and uh, the heart rate becomes uh, lower and uh, the heart contracts not too often. So we can see that two branches of vegetative nervous system have opposite influences on hard walking. The next influence I'd like to say about it's a uh, humoral influence and it is connected uh, with uh, different hormones uh, that are in the blood and with their functioning and how they influence on the heart. So we can see that uh, there are nervous influences and there are uh, hormonal influences too. And all changes in the body are connected to their influence are the best prognostics in the medicine. And all these changes uh, they are reflected in heart rate variability. That's why it's really important for us to understand this phenomenon. So it's really important tool for prognostic and uh, it's effective not only in different pathologies of uh, cardiovascular system but also in endocrine system and uh, in other systems of the body. And now let's talk exactly about uh, the Vedapulse device operating. In the basic of Vedapulse working uh, lays the EKG recording. As we all know, we make a record during 5 minutes. During this time, the program registers heart intervals. The program registers cardiac cycles and shows them like RR intervals. One heart interval, RR interval, includes both full systole and diastole. What it means? It means that our interval includes uh, all the time that heart needs to react, to contract, and uh, then to relax. So our interval reflects all regulatory influences that heart feels. So let's go step by step like uh, we usually do operating with a pulse device. After getting these RR intervals, 
the program puts vertical lines we call them markers and we see timelines appear between uh, two markers this time segments timelines are not similar they are different in time and they are measured in milliseconds and these timelines, these hard intervals, they have difference um, average uh, 10 or oh, sorry, average uh, 20 percent difference in time if we will compare them and here they can see sympathetic and parasympathetic influences and hormonal influence also and now let's take these time segments and put them vertical and you see they have something similar to the curve here because one a segment is longer, the second is shorter and so on so let's uh, put here a curve that's why in the end we have uh, such a curve you see it here on card intervalgram it exactly consists of these time segments that we are discussing now so this way we get a curve you know any curve can be analyzed using spectral analysis what does it mean? the spectral analysis means that we take one curve and can divide it uh, into different curves where each curve has its own frequency and frequency range it is similar to sunlight when sunlight goes through a prism we can see a spectrum in our case the role of such prism uh, the Fourier processing place so this Fourier transform Fourier processing allows us to get the spectrum of changing our, our intervals and when we divide our curve into different curves so we get the square of the spectrum curve it correlates to a particular frequency range we measure the power of spectrum in milliseconds squared so we use uh, units milliseconds squared so what does the frequency mean? it's uh, the quantity of uh, impulses the, the quantity of impulses per second that heart gets from the regulatory structures from parasympathetic, sympathetic uh, and uh, neurohumoral uh, influence here it becomes even more clear for us when we use Fourier transform we divide our curve into different curves into several curves each of them correlates to a particular frequency range during 5 minutes recording of EKG we get the proper quantity of RR intervals the proper quantity to analyze them and uh, we can see uh, the three main peaks depending on their frequency high frequency, low frequency and very low frequency when we summarize all of them we get exactly the curve that we used to see in the software well, this picture now it is exactly the software of the pulse device and they call this tab spectrum so we have divided our curve into three zones and we have now here three spectrums you see the high frequency range refle is reflected here with a green color it shows us the effect, the influence of parasympathetic nervous system the red color shows us low frequency waves 
and that is essentially effect of sympathetic nervous system. Blue color here is for very low frequency waves and it is about the uh, humoral metabolic effect. Here you see absolute meanings of frequency range. The units uh, used here are milliseconds squared. And now let's analyze each uh, of the types of frequency waves and how they influence on heart walking. High frequency waves are connected with parasympathetic regulation of the heart rate. One more time, parasympathetic regulation includes everything that is connected uh, with recovery of the energy of the body. It is about the rest, about the relaxation, about the slowdown. This range includes the power from 300 to 700 milliseconds squared. So what can you see after assessment on the depuls here, for example? If you will see that uh, the index here will be lower than 300 milliseconds squared, it means that uh, the influence of parasympathetic nervous system is low. It says us about uh, the deficiency in regulatory mechanisms responsible for recovery of our energy. If it is somewhere between 300 and 700 milliseconds squared, it's a normal situation, it's a norm, it means that uh, influence of parasympathetic nervous system is quite balanced. If it is higher than 700 milliseconds squared, it means that parasympathetic influence dominates here. The next is low frequency waves. They reflect uh, the activity of uh, sympathetic nervous system. It is about everything that uh, is about excitement, about uh, exaggerating, about activity. Here is a norm uh, will be between 500 and 1000 milliseconds squared. Uh, what can be in your conclusion on the pulse here? First of all, low frequency, oh sorry, low frequency wave can show us a low level of uh, mobilizing potential. If you see that this index is lower than 500 milliseconds squared, then it means here is not enough influence of uh, mobilizing systems in the body. Norm here will be from 500 to 1000 milliseconds squared and a uh, high level of mobilizing potential is uh, for everything that is higher than 1000 milliseconds squared. The next is here very low frequency waves. They reflect the level of uh, influence of uh, humoral metabolic factors. When they say humoral and moral factors, they mean hormones, exactly. There are different hormones that influence heart, but first of all, we should say about thyroid hormones. They are catecholamines, you know, adrenaline and noradrenaline, and also adrenal hormones, Maybe you also know glucocorticoids and you know they became a basis for creating such medicines as prednisolone, for example. Also here is reflected uh, the activity of such system, uh, we call it renin-angiotensin system, but it's a really medical term and it may be quite complicated for people without special knowledge, so we will not talk about it in detail now. But anyway, it uh, influences uh, heart a lot. Also in this spectral range, the activity of hypothalamus is reflected. 
So in the gnome, the spectral power here should be from 700 to 1300 milliseconds squared. And again, different sceneries. First of all, insufficient uh, level of influence of this regulatory mechanism. It is everything that is under 700 milliseconds squared. It means here is not enough hormonal regulation. Quite enough for us here will be something between 700 and 1300 milliseconds squared. It will be enough normal level of regulation. And then it dominates. Then we can see index that is higher than 1300 milliseconds squared. And now we have analyzed the influence of each uh, curve in this spectrum, of each range in the spectrum, its influence and uh, how we should read it in our assessment. And we were talking about its absolute meaning, uh, uh, about measuring in absolute units. But when we know the part of each range, we can summarize and calculate the total power of a spectrum. We call it exactly in the Vedapal software TP, total power, and uh, it reflects the level of adaptation. How much adaptation resources and adaptation capabilities the body has. It shows us exactly how the body can adapt to inner and outer problems. When we are talking about inner problems, we mean uh, different somatic and uh, psychological problems of the body, different disorders of organs and uh, psychological aspects. When we are talking about external factors, we mean, first of all, stress, ecology, nutrition, and so on. And here is, uh, we've got the following norm. If you see that spectrum, uh, the range here is um, from 1500 to 3000 milliseconds squared, it means it's a normal situation. It means here is enough resources for adaptation in this body. So, total power is summarized reflection of our metabolism, of uh, our energy resources and of our neuroendocrine control of visceral activity. So, TP total power, it is about adaptation. It is about how the body can adapt. Adaptation, it is uh, an optimal functioning of the body. Then the body can react and can adapt and uh, it is uh, like a factor of safety for our body, like a mm, quantity of vitality. And if you see that total power is low and you see it's uh, going to be lower, we can say that uh, here is a deficiency of vitality, of uh, vital powers. And if it goes high, then it means that uh, the resources of vitality also go high. When we are talking about uh, normal range here, they usually say it is from 1500 to 3000 milliseconds squared. But, uh, you know, there is such a term, middleman, so it's like a norm of middleman. Uh, indeed, here there is a quite wide corridor norm, for example, from 1000 to 4000. Uh, and uh, let's talk about uh, then it is correct and for whom it is correct. When we are talking about a uh, low adaptation level, when we see this index is lower than 1500, then uh, we say that 
here we see uh, low total power of spectrum but from our practice when we assess people who lead an active lifestyle who has an who has work, who has family, who has different hobbies and different activities and who are really involved in uh, everything. So, we often uh, can see here a small uh, lowering in the total power. For example, we can see that the total power is about 1200. Sure, it's not a norm, not a strict norm but uh, it's mm, here is nothing criminal it's not a disaster it is exactly uh, this wide corridor of norm that uh, i've mentioned already so for people who live in megapolises and uh, li have uh, really active lifestyle mm, we can say that it's uh, even norm today such a total power, I mean. So, what does it mean then you see that uh, the index of total power is lower than a norm? What does it mean? It means that uh, this person has a lower capability to adapt, to adapt to everything that is happening to the body. It can be a deficiency of adaptation resources, both as psychological, so physiological. It's like an asthenia of energy. Such people usually feel a lack of strength, a lack of powers, and uh, often they can be energetic vampires because they need more strength than they have and they should take it somewhere else. Or it can be a sign of some kind of uh, asthena neuros state. Let's talk first of all about light reduction, about uh, slight lowering here. Uh, what uh, clinical implications can we see here? Well, you can easily see it with your own eyes and you can identify these people with such a, a low total power. These are people who are easy to irritate, really irritate if one they are nervous, anxious, and uh, sometimes we say about such people that they have a low boiling point. Their psycho-emotional state is non-stationary and uh, they mm, feel usually a lack of mm, nervous energy. They spend this energy too fast. They are such uh, outgiving people and they even can be aggressive sometime and being aggressive uh, in the anger uh, they can behave in a way they don't want to behave indeed and uh, after this uh, anger they, they will suffer because they um, made harm to the people around uh, they will show repentance for their action then. So, it is about a slight depletion in total power. Now let's talk about a significant lowering of total power. That is everything that is lower than 500 milliseconds squared. It is about uh, a stenoneurotic syndrome. First of all, here uh, we can see that uh, psycho-emotional sphere suffers. Uh, we can see here uh, lability in emotional senses and uh, mostly these people have a bad mood and even a trend uh, to be in depression. We don't have interest in, every, in anything and uh, we see here a total depletion of vitality in these people. Such people usually say that uh, everything in the body uh, feels pain and uh, everything is painful for them and they have 
no desire, we have no ability to do something, to act. Where efficiency uh, goes down and uh, we have no interest in, in anything. In our words, uh, we call it chronic fatigue syndrome. And these people don't believe in their own strength. They think that uh, there is nothing that can help them. For example, such people get up in the morning and they already feel slack. They feel that everything is very bad. They don't want to go walking. They don't have an ability to concentrate. And pay attention here, such people, they usually feel loss of willpower. They cannot concentrate uh, on a problem, on something important, on their work. It's really important, it's really serious situation. Now let's talk in about optimal range here. So, it is in the range from 1500 to 3000 milliseconds squared and it means that here is a balance. The energy spending is well balanced and the body can spend energy easily uh, in a proper way and also at the same time the body can renew this energy so there is no problems with spending or with recovery. Everything is well balanced here. Sometimes this index total power uh, goes higher and uh, they said that uh, in a norm it can be around uh, 4000 but sometimes it can be even higher and for example you can see such a situation by your patients so uh, let's analyze when they see situation for example a patient with total power 5000 milliseconds square we usually see such a picture by people who are very active physically, who feels uh, some physical activity and some physical load. For example, professional sportsmen, they usually have a high total power and for them it's a normal situation. Also, we can see a high total power by people who are involved in uh, different uh, practices. I mean they are in the state of uh, walking healer. What does it mean? For example, people are involved in mental practices or in such practices as yoga, for example. For example, such people may not be too active physically, but they spend a lot of energy and that's why their total power will be also high here because they spend a lot of energy and they have to renew more energy to have an optimal balance. So, first of all, if you see high total power, check your EKG recording. If it is ok, if there is no artifacts or arrhythmia, then let's go next. About artifacts and arrhythmia, we usually, uh, say, we usually talk uh, in our other course of lectures. So, if EKG is oak, but you see a high total power, it means that there is a tension in uh, adaptation process. It is a kind of reaction that can end up with a failure of adaptation. For example, high temperature in some kind of inflammation. So, very high total power is also out of norm. Okay, we have uh, discussed uh, spectral range in its uh, absolute meanings. But when we are working on Veda pulse uh, in the tab spectrum, we usually see also other figures. Uh, they are comparative ones, and uh, you can see here on the screen also these relative indices. So, if we take a total power for 100%, when we can divide the influence of each regulatory mechanism uh, also as a percent from this 100 percent. And you can see it here on the screen and uh, 
it can uh, it can help us to understand easily what is exactly the meaning of each system how this system influences the heart and what its effect is at the same time you can see here on the screen a pie chart and uh, it reflects exactly this comparative share of each of the uh, regulatory mechanisms and now we are going next and uh, now we are exactly at the point how can we define the type of the dosha using uh, the data of these uh, regulatory mechanisms and their activity let's go next but before we will talk about it, uh, let's come back to the previous slide and let's take away the influence of the neurohumoral part of the uh, system. We will leave here on the picture only influence of vegetative nervous system, only mobilizing and uh, relaxing effect. I mean sympathetic and parasympathetic effect. We can see here are pie charts that uh, has uh, on them sympathetic and parasympathetic influences marked with red and yellow oh sorry green color. So the red color is for sympathetic and the green is for parasympathetic. In your software you will see it like a normalized value. So there will be a new near this value and uh, exactly this value will be in percent and here uh, different segments can dominate for example uh, let's look at the case then you see there is too much red so the red color dominates it means the low frequency waves dominate it means sympathetic activity um, here is uh, the main It means then, you see uh, here is too much red color, the body spends too much energy and for example when you will look at the rate of biological aging in the software, I in such cases you will see that it's quite high. It's exactly because of this imbalance between sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. But on the contrary, sometimes you can see that the green color dominates and uh, the parasympathetic uh, activity dominates and then you see that uh, the parasympathetic uh, division is too active here then uh, again looking at the index of uh, biological aging you will see that it's going down and uh, these things they correlate the normal value here will be from 0 0.7 to 2.0 if you see that uh, your range somewhere between these figures then it means it's uh, a good situation and in this case the rate of biological aging uh, corresponds uh, to the norm of uh, for this particular age And now let's look at the uh, free regulatory mechanisms all together. Now we are going to talk about balance of Mahadoshas. Uh, you know it's a tab called balance in the Vedapal software and now we are going to analyze it. We have discussed a lot of about uh, regulatory mechanisms and so on but now we see on the picture that how free doshas are distributed by this person so where is the connection let's talk about it each regulatory mechanism influences the heart working and each of them has its particular features for example metabolic processes can go high can go down or somewhere else. And talking in Ayurvedic terms, um, we say usually doshas. And we know uh, 
with what each dosha is connected. So, how we get doshas from these uh, physiological mechanisms? It's definitely our know-how, it's a um, development of Alexa Rokin, but today uh, we will look at it and I'll try to explain you how we get it. Without <laughs> open know-how, sure. For example, let's take here on the picture very low frequency waves. It's a blue segment on the pie chart and we remember that it is about the neurohumoral regulation and we know from Ayurveda that it is connected exactly with Vata Dosha. We know that uh, Vata Dosha has strong catabolic processes that it spends a lot of resources. And you remember a very low frequency wave includes uh, different uh, neuro hormonal regulation and also central level nervous regulation. The next slide and the next picture is here and you see it's a quite different picture. So look at the pie chart. Here is on the picture you see the green color dominates. Green color, you remember, it is about high frequency waves. You remember, it is about parasympathetic nervous system. And now we know that parasympathetic um, signs and parasympathetic uh, ideas, uh, they are similar to the processes of uh, relaxation, renewing energy, recovery of energy. And look at the dosha's graph. Please compare. You see the blue color, the blue column is uh, really high. The blue column is here for Kapha dosha. And Kapha dosha is exactly about anabolic processes. So, one more time, high frequency waves they uh, represent here a parasympathetic nervous system and its activity and blue column you see here is its cup dosha so a lot of green color on pie chart a lot of high frequency waves as a result we see the strong cup dosha by this person and please look at the next slide here we've got the uh, third type of distribution on the pie chart. You see here is a lot of red color. Red color on pie chart means low frequency waves. Low frequency waves means sympathetic activity of the body. So too much sympathetic activity. Sympathetic activity corresponds to Pitta Dosha. Pitta Dosha is based on the idea of uh, dominated uh, of uh, metabolic processes. Pitta dosha is characterized with, it, with strong metabolism. There are also both anabolic and catabolic processes, but we should say that here the processes of activating dominate but it's not exactly the same processes like uh, we saw at Vata Dosha. It's uh, a little bit different. It is also about the process of excitement. So excitement is strong here, but it's not the excitement uh, of Vata Dosha. It's a different one. Pitta Dosha is based uh, on the stem structures on vegetative structures and uh, its activity is connected with it and when we are talking about Vata Dosha then uh, here the main will be the activity of hypothalamus so it's uh, another structure and that's why I say that it's two different activities because the basis their nature is different again Excitement can be in Vata and excitement can be in Pitta type, but they had a different nature. 
so you see a really high um, segment of low frequency wave so it's a sign of pitta dosha here and one more thing sometimes you can see a situation on a pie chart then where will be something similar to equilibrium so all three colors will be uh, almost equal I should say it's quite a rare case but anyway it can be sometimes you can see that low frequency and high frequency and very low frequency waves all of them have uh, almost equal shares uh, about uh, uh, 33 percent or something like that we call this state uh, three dosha it means that uh, all three doshas are in equilibrium and uh, they are equal so to sum up what we have done today we analyzed the regulatory mechanisms it is really important for us because it's a basis on which the pulse is working then we took one of these mechanisms and uh, we saw how we are taking doshas from these regulatory mechanisms we took one of them I repeat and you can find uh, everything what we have discussed today on our website vedapulse.ru in the articles and uh, I hope it will help you and here on our website in the article devoted to the Fourier transform you can find all the information about spectrum about what we have discussed today and you can read it and it's a really useful one so I strongly recommend you to get acquainted with it and here we should finish today thank you very much for being with us and And thank you for your kind attention. Goodbye.